Hey everyone and welcome to episode 114 of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis. I will be your host once again for today's show. Uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in and watch all of our weekly videos. Hopefully you are enjoying them. Hopefully you are learning something fun and informative. Um, if you want to reference our notes for this video or any of our past videos, the best place to find the videos in a written format, actually the best, the only place to find them in a written format, it's on our blog page, mrbeer.com slash blog, or to the website, mrbeer.com, click on the little blog button. Uh, you can filter by brew talk uh, for a category, or you can just search in the search box there if you got a specific question about sanitizing, bottling, conditioning, anything like that, and see what comes up. Uh, We've read a, written an article about it, or we might have done a video about it. We haven't done a video about a question you have. Uh, shoot us a note to customer service or post it in the Facebook group somewhere, and uh, we can give it a go for you to see if we can get an answer to your questions. Um, we've got a quick episode today. Today's topic is uh, what to do if you keep having under carbonated beer. Um, I think this is probably one of the most frustrating things that can happen to a home brewer you know you waited the 14 days or longer to for your beer to ferment then you wait an additional two weeks for it in the bottle toss one in the fridge for 48 hours you go to drink it and it is very under carbonated if carbonated at all which is very disappointing obviously so i thought it would be useful to talk, to talk about a few things that might um impact the carbonation of your beer and possible ways to remedy them sometimes you just and it's just kind of is what it is. Uh, the first is temperature. So if your bottles are sitting below 70 degrees, they may take a little longer to carbonate. Um, in our, in, in our what, everything we do here in the office, we ferment at 70 degrees and we let our uh, bottles carbonate condition at 70 degrees. Sometimes we carbonate them warmer, so we'll put them somewhere else in the office because the brew room is a kind of controlled environment, has its own thermostat and all that stuff like that, so we can make sure the temp is good in there, but usually we like to keep it, you know, 70 degrees or above for the carbonating process. It just seems to work better and works quicker. It works more efficiently. The yeast works well in that 72 range, especially for carbonation, really, really well. So that's kind of what we've seen that works the best. So if you try one of your beers and it's under carbonated and then you realize that, well, it's storing in a place that's at 68 or 66, it just might take a little longer. So give it another week or two and see if that carbonation changes. And you can always just move it somewhere warmer if you can and let it go for another week or two. And then you should have more carbonation in your beer if temperature is the issue. Um, the second could be that you're letting your beer ferment for far too long. You don't have enough active yeast cells to create CO2. Um, I mean, yeast cells will kind of die off and once you ferment for a while, they can actually start to eat themselves, which creates some weird off flavors in your beer. Um, but you know, if you don't have enough viable yeast cells when you go to bottle, there's not going to be enough yeast to eat up the carbonation drops or sugar that you're adding to your bottle to create those or to create that CO2. So that could be an issue. So if you try a bottle that's under carbonated and you know your temperature is spot on, your bottles are new and fresh, but just a, a, you know under carbonation issue. Uh, what you can do sometimes is that, we've done a video on this in the past, is that you can add a little bit more yeast to your bottles and they will, you know, eat any remaining sugar that's left in there and create more CO2 for you. Hopefully, it doesn't always work, but it can work. Um, we did a video on how to do this, so go reference that uh, if you want to know the exact process on how to do it. I think the best place to find that would be on YouTube because that's the easiest place to search through all of the videos. Um, and the third reason that, we, that uh, we're suggesting that your bottles might just be old. I um, mean, if you use your bottles for a long time, you know, 20, 30, 40 brews, uh, the seals can start to wear down, the caps can start to wear down, they just get, you know, it happens with with, with age of bottles for sure. Um, so what will happen is they won't hold a time of seal and CO2 will slowly escape during the carbonation phase, so they might always be under carbonated. So if you're positive that your temp is spot on, you fermented it at the time, or you fermented the temperature, and for the length of time that we're suggesting in the instructions, but you think your bottles are been used multiple times or for a long period of time, and your beer's under carbonated, it might be time for new bottles. You can always try new caps first. Sometimes it's just more of a cap issue than a bottle issue. Um, I mean, they're like they're like two dollars or three bucks on our site. So if you're like, oh, I'm having issues, replace the caps first and see how it goes. Or if you just replace the bottles, you know that's probably the best way to go. Just make sure you're safe and sound. Um, but yeah, so to wrap it up, the three reasons that you might have undercarbonated beers, your 
temperature is too cold for the carbonation stage, you don't have enough active yeast cells in your bottle, or your bottles are just old and it's time to get new ones. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you did, please make sure you give it a like or a comment or share it wherever you can on social media. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms. We're just at Mr. Beer on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, that's where we're most active. Um, we do do a little bit of content and different social media platforms. So make sure you're following us on, on all three. Um, on Instagram, we love sharing your guys' posts and our stories. So make sure if you're posting on Instagram or doing reels or anything fun and exciting to tag us. Um, you can always follow us on TikTok now. We're on TikTok for those of you that are interested in that kind of thing. Um, and on YouTube, we post our brewing. We do, obviously, the brew talks on there, but we do uh, brewing videos, and hopefully we'll be doing some tasting videos in the future that we'll post exclusively on our YouTube channel. So make sure you're following us on there to get that content. Um, and if you want to learn more about Brewing with Mr. Beer, hang out with fellow Mr. Beer brewers join our Facebook group, Mr. Beer's Brewing Society. You can find that by just searching Mr. Beer's Brewing Society on Facebook. I uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend. Uh, we have a good 4th of July sale. Pandals keeping on here in box. Hopefully you're celebrating with some fireworks and some fun stuff this weekend. Um, it's a great holiday. So uh, we will talk to you guys next week. Cheers.